No, you gonna dig this. Hi, this is Stan the Man Brooks, host of Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center's award-winning show, Funk Chronicles, recorded live here at DATV Studios in Dayton, Ohio. And now, my in-studio guests all the way from Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> we want to say hello to the original members of Phase Zone. Good afternoon, evening, and daytime, gentlemen. What, is, what how y'all feel, man? This is exciting. Great, Bill. Great, great, great. Bill. great. Yeah. Good. Be, yeah all the members are here, yes, loving it. Oh, man, man, I'm so glad to. Sit. I tell you what, before we even get started, let's let's just go around the table, introduce yourself, tell people what instrument and what you did in the group, and then we'll take off with some questions, man. And I'm so man, this is an exciting day for me. Go ahead, sir. I'm Tyrone, tired to fly crumb. I play bass guitar and I bring the funk. He brings the <laughs> funk. <laughs> Ralph Akins, lead guitar, and I sung uh, lead and background vocals. All right. With the band. Roger Dodger, Roger the Dodger Parker. I'm a drummer and I usually do background vocals too. All right. Robert Neal Jr., known Robert. as Bip, Bip, leading background vocals, and uh, I'm the funk man. Yes, you are, yes, sir. I'm right. And Keith Chop Chop Harrison, keyboards, leading background vocals. Well, gentlemen, <coughs> thank you so much for coming to uh, Funk Chronicles today. And, and as you know, we are here to try our best to get as many people involved in the funk museum here that we are getting together here in Dayton, yeah. Ohio. But first, let's just talk about Faiso. Let's talk about the hits. Let's talk about how the group got started. And uh, we'll, we'll just start going through, we'll start with Mr. Tyrone Crumb. Tyrone? Okay. Okay, now we all were young musicians, but uh, how, how did the Faiso group get going? Um, actually, I'll say I got started. All right. All right from attending a James Brown concert. <laughs> mm, that's right. <laughs> and uh, the force and the pounding of, uh, of his funk just stayed with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I was uh, blessed to uh, receive a guitar for Christmas, man. Okay. And then at that time in, in our neighborhood, you know, um, everybody was doing it. They were playing music, you know, uh, even yourself, Stan. Right. You, were, you were in a group. You know, I don't know if people know that you're a drummer. You know, and a good drummer. Keith was in a different group at that time. This gentleman sitting to my left, Ralph Akins, had a group, and then, you know, I used to go see him. You know, so we were like this raised up on music. See, I, I remember Ralph. Ralph probably don't remember me, but I was very young. Ralph, Ralph had a group. And, and, and you couldn't keep up with Ralph. Exactly. Because Ralph, <laughs> exactly. Ralph, Ralph would be on top of tables. Yes, exactly. He was, you know, he, he was doing his thing, man. Yeah, he was, a, he was an entertainer. He yes, was he was. Yes, sir. Yeah, so it was, it was an honor when he got with us. Mm -hmm. I felt honored. You want to play with us? You know, okay, cool. You know, so, we, you know, we just evolved. I kept evolving, getting better. Uh, didn't do much of anything but play music and played in the garage, mm -hmm. you know. And... Um, I kept doing that and, and getting uh, job offers from different kind of uh, groups, you know, singing groups, et cetera, show bands, things like that. Uh, people were at it, people were leaving the group, you know, and then until um, we got these pieces, you know. You know, we went from phase three to phase oh, you know. 
till the, the right pieces of the puzzle got together. Okay. And that's when the funk really got funky. Mm -hmm. It got, it, 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 you oh, yeah. can smell mm -hmm. it. Yes, yeah, sir. That's right. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> and, yeah. and Ralph, I tell you, man, it, it, it is a pleasure seeing you. And, and uh, you know, just, just tell our viewers a little bit about Mr. Ralph. Yeah, it's so good to be here. I was uh, from Xenia, Ohio. And uh, I was coming over. My, uh, well, you know, they're all, we're all from the township. So. That's right. My mom lived out there, so I was just walking around one day, and uh, I must have passed by my boy's uh, driveway. I was like, hmm, who is that? <laughs> Those are too funky. <laughs> so uh, I didn't know, you know, later we would hook up, but this is my favorite group right here, these bunch of guys. Uh, they really bring the funk. And, and, I've been in, mil in a million bands, but uh, these guys really bring the funk. And I'm talking about you can't have funk without a good funky drummer. Damn. You understand Amen. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little right bit here. about Funky it. Funky Flips. <laughs> oh, man. Funky uh, <laughs> I, I first met Faisal when they were uh, Phase 3, I think, at the... Uh, Great Gatsby? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was with Round Trip Ticket. Mm -hmm. You know, me, Gary Spearman, and a few other cats. Mm -hmm. and, um, and when I heard him at the Great Gatsby, I was like, oh, okay, that's the band I want to be with. Because right. they was putting it down. Well, I tell you, man, you, you, you're still funky today, man. I'm, <coughs> I'm going to tell, tell, tell you how funky Roger was. Well, tell me about it. <laughs> See, Roger came and stood in front of our drummer, <laughs> which at the time was John Hart. Mm -hmm. right. He's from the township, too. Yeah. John is doing great things now, too. Uh, and Roger crossed his arms, and he pointed his finger at John and said, I'm gonna take your job. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I, yeah. I saw that and I said, who is this dude just? So he asked if he could sit in the next set. So the biggest mistake John made was, was yeah. <laughs> Man, Roger sat down, we went to another level. Yeah. It, it was amazing because he was hitting every accent, you know, and, and, and Love did the same thing. Uh, the late Michael Hinton was playing guitar and mm -hmm. Love, said, I'm going to take your job. <laughs> <laughs> and Love came up, man, smoking, playing with his teeth, teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. playing the guitar. Yes, he did. But man, but then, then the thing that I liked about Faze O, you, you, you know, Keith, you, you, you sing some false A and it brings that, bring it up to a different level. But man, you got to have that ground voice. Mm -hmm. And yes, man, sir. tell me about it. Bit. Well, my brother, <laughs> <laughs> all of us got a little background. Got a little background in history on how how we became part of this group. Right. I came in when it was group was still called Phase Three, mm -hmm. but um, several of these brothers, mainly Keith, approached me in my dormitory room. I was attending Central State University at the time. And they had heard about, you know, I was emceeing all the shows up there and uh, they had heard about me and they came shortcut uh, and asked would I like to be part of the group because the group was preparing to get ready to make a move to Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what I've been waiting for. With all my education that I had at that point, I was ready to jump ship, you know, if that mm -hmm. opportunity came along and it did. And um, that was my inception into Phase, phase three, in which evolved to be phase O. Well, gentlemen, I tell you, the, uh, the group um, has uh, what was put back together, and I'm pretty sure y'all can tell me a little bit about it. Uh, a few years ago, y'all did some concerts, uh, but, but uh, when, it, when it comes to uh, uh, the funk part of the group, what, what kind of influences did y'all have, man? You know, as as the band was 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 getting together, you know, like, you know, I you, when you mentioned James Brown, right, right. that's me. When it, yeah. if you couldn't play Cold Sweat as a drummer, yes, right, 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 that that was that was your lesson song right yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Don't come out the garage until you learn to beat a Cold Sweat mm -hmm. because it was a syncopated thing with a little yeah. hi hat, little. Yeah, psh, yeah, yeah. Type thing, and 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 that's how I I got into the funk part of playing drums, and and so just kind of tell me some of the influences, Mr. Harrison. We can start with you. 
We, for me, it was Sly and the Family Stone. Okay. You know, I, I love some Sly, man. You know, I just loved the way his, he performed on stage, uh, the funk that they had, a simple song, and, you know, uh, and of course James Brown, but Sly and the Family Stone, man. That, that was, man, that was my song. gig, man. Oh, my that goodness. That was my gig. Yeah. 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 What about you? Larry Graham, Graham Central Station, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Tower of Power, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and even though Chicago wasn't considered a funk group, right. they had the feel because love those horns, oh, you know, yes. and uh, that was that was. Do you know uh, uh, Tower of Power when you when you speak of them? They were in Springfield just two years ago in a park. It wasn't promoted for some reason. Something happened. But I got wind of it. It was a little rainy that day, so a lot of people didn't show up. But, you know, it just stopped right at concert time. And I'm telling you, man, that group was one of the tightest bands I've heard in years. And they still had five. It's only about three original members. But that horn section was still out of sight. And if, if you ever want to go see another concert, man, look him up. Because I tell you, Tower Power's still kicking, man. Yeah. And I, I, I love it, man. But let's, let's get to phase O. Let's get to, to the recording part of the group and how that happened. Uh, Mr. Crumb, can you give me a little thing on, on just how uh, 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 the, the songs came about? And I, I know that uh, the Ohio players had a, had a little bit to do with y'all getting on, on record, so tell us a little bit. Yeah, um, uh, my favorite songs, and I guess most of, my, most of the songs were, um, they were all from um, uh, a funk feeling, mm -hmm. you know, um, things that uh, made me bob my head, you know, when I went off into my own world. Uh, from when we were performing locally and stuff, you know, found, finding out that those groups and those grooves, uh, hey, this sounds, we want, we own to something, you know. We notice on how people are bobbing their head to our, to our own ab lib to maybe a cover tune that we may have been playing, you know, mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. You know, these are my ab libs and stuff. And um, that stuff was funky, you know. Uh, it had a feeling that, you know, anything to make my body move, you know, I, I didn't stay with it at that time. And, um, Keith would always just jump right on it, you know, whatever. And and uh, Coconut, he did the same thing. Love, if y'all don't know, he's Coconut Love. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's right, many names. And, 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 you know, even, 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 even uh, you know, Vips, um, uh, his, his funk was, um, to me, it was, you know, it was just, it was just gr it grounded. It's almost like, okay, we're going to hold it right there. When he add in, we come in with his percussions mm -hmm. and what have you. You know, we know that this, and, uh, don't overplay. You know, this is this cool right here. The soup is going to be good. Mm -hmm. Just right there. That's yeah, enough yeah. seasoning for it. You know, and it was cool. And you couldn't shake. I could not shake Roger. You know, he just locked right there with yeah, me. Yeah. You know, so he held me to like this, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you know, yeah. bring it on, man. That yeah. Bip is the greatest cowbell player in yeah, the world. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make you I mean, lock, you know, man. He don't hit it like that. He like, Bip went through a, a box of sticks, man, yeah. and got out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, he go with it, man. But, but, but if you don't have it, 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 it's a whole different song if that cowbell ain't right. Exactly. You right. see what I'm saying? Exactly. You yeah. know. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, uh, let, let's let's talk about some of some of your your original songs, Bip, uh, and and how how a few of the songs got started. And wow, there's a lot a lot a lot of stuff <laughs> in in that. So, um, yeah. for example, uh, one of the things that we would do <clears throat> because back then, you know, we went in the studios and everybody, all these brothers went in with the instrumentation, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it was a count off one two three, four, and it was a groove thing. Yeah, yeah. And we just grooved, grooved, grooved. I was on the inside, well, w w when I was playing the percussions, mm -hmm. but you know, mostly on that cowbell. But what eventually evolved is we would, we would record and then we would get tapes to take back to the hotel with us. Mm -hmm. And then um, Keith would say, 
you know, can you write a lyric? You feel something to that? Or I would tell them, you know, tell them I got something for that. Yeah. So that's how a lot of our stuff evolved. You know, um, we got to a point, you know, where the same thing would happen with Keith on the lead vocals. Same thing would happen with Ralph, Coconut Love. Mm -hmm. On, right. on it, you know, and we'd say, nah, Ralph, this sound like you, man, you know, or you came up with this lick and bam, so why don't you write the lyrics on it? So we had a, we had a process, a way of doing things that was, a, was natural for us, you know, it just, it just came to us. There were certain songs that had certain feels and each individual was able to have a writing vibe for that. Right. And Ralph, let, let's, let's ask all of you and we'll, we'll start with you on, on, on. What is one of your favorite phase old songs? Now, don't you know? It might not be you singing the lead, but right. what was one of your favorites? You know, I like uh, breaking the funk was pretty nice. Breaking good the funk. thing. You the good thing, man. Oh, good thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get some yeah, booty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, back, <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. That was, you know, you, as, as a radio personality now, that don't mean nothing. Right. Right. But exactly. back in the day, yeah. uh, I don't think you got any airplay on no. that one. No. That, that, no. that word booty was, was something the that... Word. The yeah. music was more rock. Uh -huh. yeah. It was yeah. funky. Yeah. It was yeah. hard. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And what, it was a fun tune. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What? yeah. And what album was that on? It was, it was on Riding High Out. Yeah. The Riding High Out. It was on Riding High Out. Yeah. I'll tell you, man. Mm -hmm. uh, Keith, when it, when it comes to also, you know, um, arranging songs, man, um, did you all, did you all uh, participate in it in a way where, uh, you know, let me have a little bit of your flavor, your flavor, your flavor. Uh, the arrangements and, 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 and is where I, I loved about the phase of songs, man, the way y'all jumped into it. Yeah, it's like Miss said, we all, you know, we all... Uh, pitched in when back in the day when you were going to the studio, like Biff said, they 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 would, they would roll tape, and we would just groove. Mm -hmm. And then we may say, okay, go to A. We go to A, oh, groove in A for a while. Go to C. We go to mm -hmm. C, and then they spliced it together to make the song, and that would be the arrangement of the song. Now all the overlay stuff, you know. That came after the basic foundation was laid, but man, we go in the studio, uh, what seven in the evening, come out <laughs> seven in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And yes, and we sir. didn't track over. I don't know how many, yes, how many <laughs> tracks, man. <laughs> right. You know, as, 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 you know, and I know now, y'all, as you see the original group together, it just makes you think, man, of all the fun things that y'all had to do while you're traveling mm -hmm. on the road. Exactly. And I know somebody's got a story that they can tell me that is. That, <laughs> Uh, that's clean. Mm, that uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that you know okay. that uh, that our viewers can uh, 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 understand. Okay. Uh, 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 okay. And, and, we, and we, we gonna we gonna start with the funky drummer, cause yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I know okay. he's got a few. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's actually it's like well, we was on the highway and uh, Keith Harrison was driving the band. No, he wasn't. And <laughs> y'all had Keith driving, and, yeah. and, okay. <laughs> and uh, I guess that he got the idea for riding high. It was a, uh, I think he passed gas. It was funk in the breeze, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all yeah. should have made a song like that. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, and that's how riding high came about. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know that ain't true, but we're gonna get to the riding high song. But <laughs> yeah, that's. But yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> I'm gonna let that go. Uh, yeah. But oh, I, I know you got some memories. Oh though. yeah, some high ones. We was down in uh, smell that bike. Yeah, we was down in uh, Brownsville, Texas, <laughs> one time, and uh, the crowd went wild, and we was tearing them oh, yeah. up, and then mm -hmm. we start seeing the parts of the clothes coming up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, undergarments and everything. I was like, Ooh, that that was really wild that <laughs> night. You, yeah, you knew you had kind of made it. That I had kind of made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love was playing. He started playing with his teeth, and that girl jumped up on stage. No, she threw she threw a bra on yeah. stage, and he hung it on his guitar. No, he didn't. <laughs> oh he man, playing. that that yeah. was like. <laughs> Don Curse is your moment. <laughs> right, right. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That was amazing. Mm, bad. Come yeah. on. I know, I know you. Oh, man. You, you said to keep them clean, though, bro. Yes, so, that's right. um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think probably I, I, the closest thing to clean was... Um, <laughs> Was um, yeah. we always got because Keith and I dealt with um, the leadership. Keith was, you know, uh, took care of all the business stuff, and at the time I was the secretary treasurer of the group, appointed mm -hmm. by the group members, and um, so we got adjoining rooms where you know the little door in the middle, mm -hmm. so. Keith could open his side, I could open mine, and we could go in between. And even if all the band was in there, we didn't have to go out in the hallway. Mm -hmm. So one night, um, we were on the West Coast. I can't remember exactly where we were, um, but um, it was the night that we played on a show. And what group was Taka Boom with? Undisputed Truth. Okay, mm -hmm. Undisputed yeah. Truth, mm -hmm. you Undisputed know. Truth. And we learned that that was uh, Chaka Khan's sister but anyway right. we we had they knocking on the doors and so when bands would be in the hotels we would sort of like party together you oh, know yeah. and because they put us on the same floors right. and um make a long story short to that um we were invited across the hallway to taka boom's um uh, room and the rest of the, the undisputed truth was there and several of phase of but bottom line is the way i exited was not the way that I went into that room that night. Not some memory, because I crawled out of that room. <laughs> I, I crawled out of that room yeah. across the hall. I was lucky. We, I, my room was across the hall. And I don't know if me and Roger were roommates then or who, but I never have forgotten that. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. And, I, and, I, and I'm glad you kept that clean. Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. So thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, come on, man. I know you got Oh, it. man. Like you said, it's, it's, it's a million. I think one of the finest moments that I can remember was uh, we, were, we were traveling. We had a van that we had converted into the funk van. Mm -hmm. We put a couch in there. We gutted yeah. it out and had a couch. And, right. and everybody was jockeying to get to that couch. And we was pulling a trailer. And at the time, our road crew was a guy named uh, Gabriel and uh, uh, a guy named Blue. And we were on the highway, man. And we were kind of almost all the way asleep. And all of a sudden, the van took a different shift to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what had happened was, the driver, and, and thank God we're here today, had fell asleep. Mm. And the van, he, he had veered across the highway, and when he jerked it back, you know, the, the ditches on the side of the highway, mm -hmm. the van was riding yes, sir. with the trailer still connected to it on his side, and then it came back up, man. Mm. You know, with all that equipment and weight, and... Uh, that was a wake up call for us to, yeah. to like, you know. Uh, yeah. Some things got changed. Mm. That was that was <laughs> one of the one of the you should say some things got changed. One of them. A new driver would be good. Yeah. One of them. <laughs> that would right. be the first yeah. change I made. Yes, yeah. 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 This is the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center show, um, Funk Chronicles. But we're here also, man, because we are in Dayton, Ohio. And we are trying our best to make sure we get this uh, uh, museum off the ground. And, and, and I just wanted some, some of your intake, Faisal. You know we're hoping that you, you still got an old uniform that y'all used to wear, something that you can kind of uh, put in our, uh, the exhibition center. But I, I need to know uh, little feelings. How do y'all feel about this funk center, man, that's coming, that's coming alive? I think it's great. You, you, yeah. you know, it's gonna it's gonna be one of those kind of things. I know you. you we we'll take one of your hats. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah. let, let's 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 talk about it just for a second. A bit, you know, how how you feel about the Funk Center, David Webb and his crew, man? You know, just tell me a little bit about. It. I think it's one of the. It's something that's overdue. Yes. For the the city of Dayton, and all of the. Um, the, the music that came out of this 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 town, 
you know, I think it's something that should have been recognized a while back. But I am glad and blessed that um, it is being done now and that we're, we're still part of this arena of funk musicians and entertainers, you know, because um, this was a mecca. This was a mecca back in the day, you know, when it comes to funk music and all of the talent between here and Springfield and Cincinnati, you know, and uh, <laughs> Hamilton. You, just, you can just go on and on. Yeah, yeah. And but see, the thing I like about the funk cinema, man, we're not just talking Ohio, because we, we know right. all the dating right. groups and, right. and, and, and beyond, but we're talking the funk center of America, man. This right. is what we're trying to get exactly. this place to okay. be. Exactly. So we're talking groups from all over. And, and this is one thing, and, 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 and Ralph, I know you've played with many groups. Uh, so, you know, how, how do you feel, man, about the funk center and, and, and things that we could, that, and maybe even you can contribute in some kind of way if it's nothing but getting the word out? Man, wow, I'm so excited, you know, for this. Nowhere like uh, Dayton, so it's uh, really something. I tell you, man, and, and, and uh, Tyrone, yeah. as you as you think about it, you know, um, you 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 can think about all your influences here in Dayton, Ohio, right. putting those into the Funk Center, but but you know. When you when you when you're at home and you're just thinking about this, man, just just tell us a little bit about you know, hey, what what can Tyrone do to just get that word out for us, man? Um, I can just continue to um, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna be honored mm -hmm. for one, and be proud and um, to share, you know, um, how I love music, how I love funk, mm -hmm. um, because. Um, this area, as well as funk groups all over the country, you know, they, we qualify. You know, we qualify, and um, and I'll just stand up and, and, and share with anybody that um, we you know, that we we need to be recognized, and people should share because we go deep, man. You know, with with entertainers and and um, the Green Light Sundays. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. And we talk about that, and that guitar player ended up playing with Mother's Finest. A lot of people don't know this stuff. You know, and, uh, and that's what I'm saying. The, the history, the history, of man, the musicians the history, yeah. has to be known, man. You yeah, know, the you, history, you know, the London Ball, that, the Continental, all of that, man. You know, and, you know. And Keith, let let, let me let, let me ask you this: uh, your biggest hit out of the group, Riding High. Mm -hmm. Can you can you tell me exactly, in a way, what what has that song done now? 20 years wow. later. Oh man. Sampled, I hear it. Yeah, just tell it, you, you know. You have no idea uh, how many people have sampled uh, Riding High. Never in, in, in my biggest dreams, I would have right. thought the song mm -hmm. is more popular today than it was when we actually recorded because, again, radio was limited to what they could, could, could play because the song is what it is, mm -hmm. Riding High, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, uh, I'm I'm just thankful, you know, that we all still uh, have some kind of royalty coming in uh, from the song. Uh, first of all, and that as as new groups come on the scene and they hear that, they want to put it, make it a part of their music. So that in itself has you know has made history for us. Uh, uh, far as that particular song, you know. Uh, it, it was my favorite out of all the songs that we did, not because it's the most popular, mm -hmm. but just because of that groove, man. It, it just had a thing right. on it mm -hmm. that, uh, right. you know, when you hear it, you, you can't help but to start bobbing your right. to it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, you know, it makes you feel good. So, uh, and uh, it, it was all a part of us, uh, you know, bringing that together. So. I think with, with the Funk Museum, it's going to be a great thing for this city. Like Bip said, it's way overdue. And uh, pulling in all the uh, Funk Masters across the land uh, is another wonderful thing. But to make Dayton the pinpoint of mm -hmm. where all this can happen, uh, not only will it bring money into our city, mm -hmm. you know, but it'll be a history, like Tyrone had said, that people will find out and know you know, uh, especially with the educational departments, uh, uh, people will exactly. be able to do a lot of different things 
not only w you know from seeing it as an exhibition center, but also an educational center. And I'm proud to be a part of that. Well, again, gentlemen, uh, you know, uh, when, when we talk um, music and musicians, and I, and I know that uh, a lot of y'all uh, uh, have gone on in different directions or doing different things now, but uh, it, it is just so nice to see all, all five, the original members of Phase O, you know. And uh, w w may I ask you this? All right, Phase Three, different, different group, different members. Uh, how did the name come about? Did, did, did y'all say, well, we might have 10 in the group, so we better not use no more numbers? Or, so, <laughs> so, so if y'all just use phase, uh, well, oh, we could have Tyrone, five. Tyrone actually started phase three. Yeah. So. Phase three was um, a backing group for Jerry Demings. Jerry Maxey, I believe that was her oh, name. Oh, wow, yeah. And it was Jerry Maxey and phase three. There was three members in the group. Um, Funky Chunky, mm -hmm. myself. And Michael Nooks, your mm -hmm. classmate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the name came about. Because it was just at that time it was three members. Right. Now I had no idea this thing was going to blow up and go in the direction that it that it did. And um, like you said, uh, I, I'm just honored, man, to be with these four brothers, man. Yeah, well, and to have gentlemen, again, in, be in behalf of all of us here at the Funk Center, we want to thank y'all so much, man, for taking time out and, and, and telling uh, our viewers a little bit about Faisal. And again, uh, thank y'all. And really, I appreciate everything. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, this thank is you. Stan the Man Brooks, host of Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center's award-winning show, Funk Chronicles. Until next time, keep it funky. Thank you.